Hello there. At some time t, I have a rocket of mass capital M moving upwards with some velocity v. Now, to be perfectly clear, the total mass of this rocket, capital M, includes the mass of the rocket itself and whatever fuel is left on board. And so what's going to happen is this rocket is going to propel itself by releasing some of its fuel. So let's go ahead and capture that. At some later time, right, so sometime delta t is going to go by, and so we're going to be at some later time t plus delta t, right? And so what's our rocket going to look like? It's going to have ejected some fuel, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to redraw the rocket out. But this time we're noting that we've released a chunk of fuel, okay? And this chunk of fuel is going to have some little mass delta m, all right? So what's the mass of our rocket system now? It's going to be capital M minus delta n, right? And so this little chunk of delta n here, it gets ejected from the rocket with some velocity, I'm going to call it u, in order to propel the rocket forward, right? And so our rocket is now going to have some velocity v plus some delta v, right? Effectively, by expelling this mass, we're propelling the rocket forward. Now then, there's a couple of really important details that we need to pay attention to. All right, if we're tracking the velocity of the rocket, what frame do we want to be tracking that velocity in? We want to be tracking it in what I'm going to call S, the space frame, all right? So S is just outside of the rocket. S is totally still. It's watching this rocket as it speeds up, right? And it moves throughout outer space. Great. Really important question though, where is U being reported from? Where is the exhaust velocity getting reported from? Well, the reality is, right, what we have is we have somebody on the rocket, and so I'm going to call this frame R for the rocket frame. And the guy on the rocket frame says, okay, from my perspective, I shot my fuel out purely downward with some velocity U, right? But this is going to be really important to reconcile because at the end of the day, right, what we're going to do is we're going to use conservation of momentum to solve this problem. And so we're going to need to find the velocity of our little chunk here in frame S. OK, so let me go ahead and start by doing that. OK, for simplicity, I'm just going to define the upward direction as positive, which means that this U here is going to have a minus sign on it. Right, and so the velocity of this ejected bit of fuel in the S frame, so I'm going to call this U sub S, is really going to be equal to, you take the velocity of your rocket, V plus delta V, this is really the velocity of your R frame, right, and from that we're going to subtract the velocity of our little chunk U, right, are we super clear on what this relation here is saying? It's telling us how to convert our exhaust velocity from the perspective of someone in the rocket R, where we're recording that exhaust velocity, to this S frame here, which is our inertial frame, which is where we're actually going to be doing our physics from. How are we going to analyze the physics? We're going to use the conservation of linear momentum. How exactly is this going to work, right? Well, notice how if in my system I include all of the particles, right, and that means at some later time t plus delta t, still including all of the particles of my rocket and the fuel, on that system we have no net external forces, you know, this dynamics are just happening in vacuum. Alright, so when we consider that total system, momentum is going to be conserved. Don't get this confused, right? If I go and I just look at, instead of the total system, if I look at, you know, the particles in just the rocket part, which is ultimately what we're going to be interested in, you say, no, 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 there's a thrust on that portion, and I completely agree with you. There is going to be a thrust on this portion only due to the ejection of this guy here, right? But notice how that really is just me changing the definition of my system to say that, look, I'm just going to consider the particles in this top piece. No, 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 no. 
For my analysis going forward here, I'm going to be considering all of the particles at play. And for that system, momentum is going to be conserved. Right, the reason I even bring this up though, of having different ways of kind of defining your systems of particles is, that's a really important skill in physics, honestly. You know, being able to go in and out, looking at, you know, all of the particles in your system, and then looking at a subsystem, and then saying, oh, in the overall system, momentum is conserved, but maybe here, momentum isn't conserved, right? And having this kind of interplay of looking in, out, in, out, is really, really important, and that's kind of how you develop that skill in physics, right? So anyways, in this total orange system here, momentum is going to be conserved, right? And so that means if I write out delta P over delta T, right, in this time interval delta T, this is going to be equal to zero. There is going to be no change in our system's momentum, right? And to be super explicit, to calculate out this delta P here, we're taking our momentum at our final time, T plus delta T, minus our momentum at our initial time, T. All right, and so now just looking at this picture, let's go ahead and write this out here. Okay, let's go ahead and start by writing out our final momentum. Well, first in our system, we have this rocket component here. And so I'm going to have, it's going to have a mass m minus delta m times its velocity v plus delta v. And next we're going to have plus, we need to consider the momentum of our fuel bit here and it is going to have a mass of delta m times, oh, us, right? Remember, all of the physics here, we have to analyze in the s frame of reference. That's our inertial frame. We can just use Newton's laws, no problem, in frame s, right? And so we're going to use us here, right? And so, and so, I'm not going to bother writing us, I'm just going to replace this right now with v plus delta v minus u, okay? And now, from my final momentum, I'm going to subtract my initial momentum, and this is minus, oh, look how nice and easy that is, that is just capital M times v, right? And so this is all still going to happen in some time delta t. And so I'll just go ahead and put that on the outside here. All right, let's go ahead and start expanding this guy out and canceling terms. So I'm going to take the 1 over delta t times, and let's get expanding. I'm going to have m times v minus delta m v plus capital M delta v minus delta m delta v. Next, expand this uh, term here out. I'm going to have plus delta m v plus delta m delta v minus u delta m and I have minus capital M v right and so I'm gonna have cancel here cancel here I'm gonna have cancel here cancel here cancel here cancel there and so now things are getting really nice right I'm going to go ahead and write out my terms that I have left over. I'm going to have m delta v over delta t minus u delta little m delta t. And this is still all going to be equal to zero. Now, what's going to happen if I take the limit, if I take the limit as delta t goes to zero? So far, we've been considering finite changes in time. If I turn this into little infinitesimal changes in time, you know, we're going to get a differential equation here. I'm going to have capital M dV dt minus U dM dt, and this is going to be equal to zero. Now, how would we make use of this equation here? Right? If we're trying to find the velocity of our rocket V as a function of time, Maybe somebody gives us this parameter here, dm dt. Think about what this is. This is our fuel exhaust rate. This is how much fuel are we emitting every second, right? And in theory, somebody might just give us that parameter. Somebody gives us, oh, I'm ejecting fuel at some constant rate gamma, 
Or maybe I'm not emitting fuel at a constant rate gamma, this, uh, I'm emitting some rate as a function of time. If we're given that, that's excellent, right? We'd be able to just plug this in for dm dt, and we'd be able to ultimately solve this uh, differential equation here, and you'd be able to pull out your velocity as a function of time of your rocket. That would be really neat. And you know, there are in fact problems that do just that in physics. However, even if we're not told the exact rate of fuel emission, there's still plenty we can do with this equation here. I'm first going to take this exhaust rate parameter here, and we're going to write it in terms of the mass of the rocket, okay? And what I'm going to point out to us is that this dm dt here is going to be equal to minus d capital M dt. What I'm saying here is this dm dt, this is the fuel exhaust rate and it is a positive number. It tells us at what rate is fuel getting emitted from the rocket. And you just say, uh, I don't know, five kilograms per second. There you go, it's a positive number. But now what I'm doing is I'm reframing the question here to, okay, and what's that doing to the rocket's mass? Oh, then in that case, I'm losing mass right? The rocket is losing mass if this guy on the left here is a positive number. So I'm losing mass from my rocket at that rate. And so we introduce this minus sign here. So this is the conversion from the fuel exhaust rate to what's actually happening to the mass that I'm calling my rocket, right? This remaining portion up here. Because the reason why we're doing this, by the way, the reason we're doing this is because we have this term capital M here, and we want to rewrite our differential equation purely in terms of capital M, right? And so with this substitution, I'm gonna have M times dV dt plus u dm dt, now a capital M, is going to be equal to zero. Right, and so what we can roughly think of this as is multiplying both sides through by dt, and we're going to have this differential equation here. m dv is equal to minus u dm, right? And so I'm going to separate this out, and I'm going to have dv over u is equal to minus dm over m okay and now let's just integrate this guy out i'm going to take the integral on both sides okay on the left hand side i'm going to say that the rocket starts with some initial velocity v naught and ends at some final velocity v final and this corresponds to on the right hand side here the rocket starts with some initial mass m naught and ends with some final mass m final all right, and so let's go ahead and write out what we get. We're going to have V final minus V naught over U on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we're gonna have this is equal to minus, we're going to have the natural logarithm of M final over M naught. All right, now let's go ahead and write this out in terms of V final. I'm gonna have V final is equal to v naught plus u times the natural logarithm of m naught over m final, bearing in mind that I switched the sign on the natural logarithm by switching m naught and m final inside. Right, just properties of natural logarithms. Right, and so this equation here, this is called the ideal rocket equation. Right, and so what we've effectively done here is instead of the hypothetical situation before where I said, oh, we can find our velocity as a function of time, this allows us to find our velocity as a function of the mass of the rocket, right? And just a final reminder on this parameter u here, I don't think anyone has confusion about what v naught, m naught, or m final mean, right? But this uh, parameter u here, this is the speed of the ejected fuel, right? You take it to be a positive value. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here. 
If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. I love to hear about people getting on board. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.